um, we are not calling for a tea, we are going to learn I forgot the term. And um, we are, uh, many times we are um, um, confused with a CT, which is search for uh, extraterrestrial life. And we are not doing this, we are a student group building satellites and um, last time we nearly made it to the moon. Um, CETI stands for Student Space Exploration and Technology Initiative. And um, it was once at least um, a big um, Europe-wide um, organization of uh, many students and they had together with ESA um, some projects, free satellites to build and um, yeah, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Uh, first of all was uh, ISEO, uh, which was um, European Student Earth Orbiter. And, um, it is, was, as the name says, um, built for orbiting the Earth. Uh, same with Express, Express with Express, which was built um, out of ISEO, and ISMO is the um, satellite we built to go to the Moon, European Student Moon Orbiter. Um, first of all, there was ISEO, and it was um, in the beginning, it was a student project, and there was no ESA in it. But um, we asked ESA to um, participate and they said yes. Um, unfortunately, as it is always with this project, it becomes very expensive and it takes its time to build it. So um, we made an express version as we had in 18 months time some um, opportunity to launch it. And we already we really did it. We built uh, this thing. And yeah. There was the launch, it really went into space. But um, unfortunately, we had um, some kind of energy problem, so not every subsystem could be tested. And yeah, guess what? It was all my oil. It was, of course, our system that could not be tested. Uh, by the way, I forgot it in the beginning. I'm a little bit nervous because I'm doing this in English. Um, we are the propulsion subsystem. <laughs> So we are not doing the whole thing, we are just doing the propulsion. Yeah, and we could not be tested because there was no energy for us and it was yeah, kind of sad. But at least it was our fault that we could not be tested. Yeah, we um, had the idea then to go to the moon um, in the next decade. And um, yeah, again we had some studies, okay, can we do it, how can we do it? And after we did it, we asked Isa, hey, you want to join us? And I said, yes, I get it. And um, we also got a partner industry, um, which is SSTL from Great Britain. And so we started it. Uh, basically, we took some of the um, parts from NCU to our new project, because it's always that you take things you already know, because you know they are working. For example, that was a valve from a dentist chair and um, a firefighting briefing tank for our um, cold gas. But um, yeah, it may be a little bit new approach to um, take things like that, but at least they work and most of all they are cheap, um, at least cheaper than you when you buy your um, space qualified products. Uh, this is what it looks like when you take all your things you have together and put it on the table and look, okay, what do we need? And uh, what do we already have and what does it look like anyway? Yeah. Then you can compare the evolution of a spacecraft to the evolution of humanity. You have mm -hmm. in the first phase, you have phase A where you have ideas and where you dream, and then you have the second phase B where you do all this well, paper stuff, which is quite, it takes time, but you have to define the system. Uh, when you have to find the system, you go to phase C, where you can go into the laboratories and test your system, um, whether everything works and the parts and stuff. And then in phase D, you um, take all the parts and put it together to one satellite, and finally in phase D, you go and fly it. Okay, this was our um, system in the beginning of phase A. As you can see, it's quite huge and um, we have grass stars and wells and everything in it. But um, one thing the evolution of mankind and the evolution of satellites do not have together is in common is that 
our system just got smaller and smaller and smaller. And in the end, we only had this, which is a little bit of a difference. We only had to pressurize now, and we do not have any thrusters left. Um, yeah, but at least we had a system. Yeah, but unfortunately, um, it got very, very expensive, and Isa said, no, we don't want to fund this anymore. So <laughs> this was um, quite unfortunate, but um, this is how it goes in space travel. But um, now we had all the components together and we thought, well, okay, we have all this stuff, so let's build it at least and look how it, how it would look like and most importantly, does it work at all. So we, um, this is our current project, Code Customs Trade Experiment, we just put all things together and look whether it works or not. Yeah. Um, for the next time after Codex, we do not know yet what we are going to do, but um, we have many, many ideas. For example, we have in the left corner um, a satellite which is um, doing laser shots to bring down space debris. We have some kind of a cheating football where we put the subsystem into a football and a thing flies around and where you want to happen to. We may have an orbital around the ISS, which would also be an idea, or we would join another student project. Yeah, this is um, some pictures of our team meetings. Um, we meet around, I don't know, once a week, where um, most people have time, and um, do all the discussions and to-do lists and what else you have to do when you uh, do a project. And of course, we have um, sometimes building times where we have to put all things together or go into the laboratories. And yeah, do this stuff and of course we also have very much fun because we are a little bit yeah, funny group. And <coughs> there was for example um, last um, Christmas we had um, the problem that we want to have what's the name? <laughs> we want a glue bed and um, we want to have one but unfortunately there was no heater in the whole building and so we had put our um, what is this? Cats and um, meshes together and um, yeah, as you can see it's a huge flame out of it and in the end you become you get this stuff hot and it was quite funny. And we got it clean in the end, <laughs> which is important. Yeah, um, I was planning to give this presentation in German, so this is German. <laughs> Obviously. Um, I will try to translate it well. What do you have, um, or what use it to do when you be part of the project? First of all, you build a real satellite, and, um, which is very great when you come to talk with friends. Oh, what are you doing in your free time? Oh, no, I'm building a satellite. It's um, quite cool, and um, you learn to know how to do this in um, a practical way, which no one in your studies ever teaches you how to put this stuff together and what is behind the scenes in um, space travel. And yeah, you have also got new contacts in the in the, the, the um, abroad, and you get it in here in this institute, and you learn to know new students. And because everyone is quite friendly, it you have much much fun. Yeah. And this is the last slide. <laughs> <laughs> and I put, my, I put my email address uh, on this if you want to contact me or you can add me on Facebook. And yeah, that's it. Any questions? <laughs> conference and um, it was in last May, in this May, and yeah, we were publishing it and writing it ourselves. It was quite an experience. Well, <laughs> um, you said that you recently lost funding from ESA. Do you will you continue to seek funding from another source in the future? Um, no, unfortunately not. It, um, it's difficult because it's a uh, huge costs and. Um, you have to contact very, very much people to get the money together, but um, we do not know exactly what. Can I ask something? 
Yeah. Um, it's also because it was a students project from all over Europe. So there were, I think, 17 different universities involved for the whole time. Like, it must be competitive to apply for some sort of grant, I suppose. Yeah, but the main problem is to, to get all the people together. And to So it wouldn't make one much sponsor, it wouldn't be enough. So that's why ESA, because it's all over Europe anyway. So, But since they decided to, well, kill our project. <laughs> It's difficult to find somebody. Actually, actually, I think one of the lessons learned in that project is don't don't come to friends with strangers and don't give their money and grant it because I'll say might just kill your project. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because that's actually the funny thing is that the project was started without Visa, but now Visa killed the project. So we don't kill Visa. <laughs> But it's also an experience you don't learn in your studies is that well, it can at any time. So it was an um, important experience, I think. Uh, what was the scientific goal of going to Deep Two? Um, yeah. I think we had, of course, a camera. And um, what did we have? I think. Yeah, hmm? uh, it was a, a network for communication to. Um, to communicate with all our ah, yeah. we wanted like to establish some kind of internet on the moon. With um, the, and there was the same project um, by NASA, by American students, and we wanted to work together. But it would be yeah. You really want to uh, bring up an event uh, in one decade to the moon? No, 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 no. <laughs> it was it was unmanned, of course. <laughs> you cannot do this. Uh, you cannot do this by the students. But as you can see uh, on this express. It doesn't always work, and when you have some people in there, it may be a little bit um, uncomfortable for them if it doesn't work properly. <laughs> so it was just an unmanned probe, just. Um, but but um, to come back to the scientific goal, I think the main goal was to um, educate students so that um, students can, can learn things and can go better into the industry or in the scientific community. And uh, how many students work in this project? How many? Yeah. I think we were about 200 people all over Europe. Right. Something like that. So far, you not. Anything else? <laughs> mm. Any ideas what the city project should, should launch? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> We are building this all together and putting it um, in the laboratory and see if it works. And after that, we are going to decide what to do next. So we're open for everything. So any ideas? But Just I know uh, what we are going to do next to a girl group or two hundred or. Um, I think most of the projects involved that we are here in Stuttgart only, but it can also be that if we. Um, <laughs> Oh, doesn't matter. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, we had uh, the opportunity to go to a DLR mission, and that would involve, of course, team working with other people we do not yet know. But yeah, Mika hmm? It's called Mika Two, and um, it's a project already existing, and we would join it if we want to. Okay. Anything else? No question. Okay. And thank you very much. <laughs>